You know, it's really fun. I hear her foot come up, and I know it's time to stand up. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome to Hope CRC. For those of you members, I am glad to see you all here. For those of you who are guests and visitors, welcome. We rejoice that you've joined us. We're glad that you're here. We know that God has brought you here with a purpose and for a reason. 
For those of you joining online, we're glad you're with us as well. It is a privilege to worship together. We want you to know whether you're a guest or visitor here, a frequent attender, a regular member, someone joining us online, you are part of our family. We want you to know that we'd like to connect with you. We'd like to get to know you. We'd like to share with you, pray with you, whatever you need. Please contact us. Find a, find a way to contact us. If you notice at the beginning of the service uh, on the screens and online, you can scan the QR code. That will give you our phone number here, email address. It's just an easy way to connect with us. Please do that. We want to get to know you. We'd love to see if this is a place that you can call home. Again, we're glad you're here. We come to worship. We rejoice that God has called us to worship. Let us sing together as we prepare to worship. We bow down. Let us stand to sing together. called to worship by the Lord, and we hear his words in the psalm, when the psalmist speaks in Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is good. It is he who has made us. We are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generation. And he greets you with these words, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And now as he has welcomed you, let us welcome one another to worship. kind of wonder if I hid back here longer how long people would just no. again as we continue in worship let us sing together and sing come thou fount of every blessing Oh. 
As we come to this time in worship, we have come to a time where we consider what, who God has called us to be and how God has called us to be obedient to his commands. We also consider the way in which we fail. We recognize the fact that we fail, we sin, we fall, we fall short. And we confess those things before the Lord. We stand before his throne and we confess our sins and we ask his forgiveness. And today we rejoice in the words of Jesus Christ as we recognize that assurance of pardon that is given through Christ, through his sacrifice, through his love, mercy, and grace. And we hear the words of Jesus Christ in John 8. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Those are the words of Christ as he talks about redemption, as he talks about our state before God the Father in sin. And he says, we are adopted as sons through him. And in him we are free. We are free of that debt of sin. That is a promise of the pardon that in him we can receive because of his sacrifice. We rejoice in that. Again, during this time, of, during this time in our worship, we have considered the Ten Commandments, what we're called to do as obedient children of God. Our confession, as we recognize that we fail, but this promise that we receive in Jesus Christ, through his blood, through his sacrifice, that we are heirs and sons and daughters of God because of him. That is a promise that we hold on to in joy, in hope, and in peace. As we consider that promise, let us pray. Father, we come before your throne, and Lord, we recognize that you have called us to be your people. And as your children, you have called us to obedience. You have told us who you've asked us to be, what you've asked us to do. Lord, may we be faithful in doing that. Lord, when we fail, may we return to you. Put it through the work of your spirit, put it on our hearts to repent, turn away from those sins and call out to you, seeking your forgiveness. Today, Lord, we celebrate the truth of the assurance of pardon through your son, Jesus Christ. That he, in his sacrifice, freed us from the debt of sin, freed us from the eternal punishment for the sins that we commit. May we hold on to that in joy, in hope, in love, and may we be confident in that as we share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he came to die, that he came to save us from our sins. Lord, we thank you for all of those things that you have given us, given us what we need to recognize how to serve you, that you have given us an avenue to seek forgiveness, and Lord, that you have pardoned us from our sins. Lord, we pray these things in your Son's name and his shed blood alone. Amen. In response to that promise, let us sing together, I then shall live.
as we continue in worship. We've come to that time where we pray together as a congregation. We prepare our hearts, we prepare our minds, but we go before his throne, confident that God hears and answers our prayers. Let us approach his throne together as a community. Father in heaven, we come before you now, and Lord, we recognize your glory, your power, and your authority. Lord, we come humbly before your throne, grateful, Lord, that you have given us the opportunity to seek you in prayer, that as your children, we can come before you and pre present to you our prayers, our petitions, our confessions, and our praise. It is with joy that we gather. It is with rejoicing that we sing. It, was, it is with anticipation, Lord, that we come to your scriptures together. And Lord, it is wonderful to have communion together as a community, fellowship together as one in your house of worship. Lord, as we approach your throne, there are so many things on our hearts and on our minds, Lord, that can weigh on us, that can distract from the focus of focusing on you, our, pri our priority of seeking you, seeking after you, growing closer to you. Lord, and sometimes in those trials, that's, that's what you're doing, Lord. You're moving us closer to you. You're gathering us in as a hen gathers her chicks, surrounding us with your comfort and your care, spreading your wings or top us and protecting us. May we be reminded of those things, those, those times in trial and times in concern. Lord, we pray for those who are not feeling well. We have hit that season of flu and cold, and Lord, there's just oftentimes we just don't feel quite right. There's so many of us that are suffering from simple coughs or runny noses or just things that annoy. Lord, be with them, care for them, and Lord, give them healing. Lord, we know that these things shall pass, and Lord, we know that it is in your time and your will that those things will go away, but we pray, Lord, for those who are suffering through colds and flu and be with them. Lord, we thank you that in this winter season we see your hand. We see your hand as the seasons continue to move and even in the snow and in the icy wintry conditions, the cold. Lord, we see that you are almighty and in control of all things. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of prayer as well. We pray and rejoice that Jim Voss was able to return home, that they were able to successfully put in a pacemaker. Lord, we pray that it continues to work successfully, and we pray for a full recovery. As Lord, it is just, surgery is just hard sometimes, and dealing with the recovery from that can be difficult, but Lord, be with him, and we rejoice, Lord, at the success of the surgery. We rejoice that the pacemaker was able to be put in place. Lord, we also pray for Diana Dykstra as she continues uh, to seek doctors' uh, opinions and that, Lord, they may be able to help her and that may, may be able to take care of those concerns that have come up. Lord, I know it's not always comfortable to wait. It's not always easy to be patient. Lord, I ask for patience and for the ability to wait in hope and in peace and in comfort. Lord, we also pray for the doctors that they would be, that through their skill and talent, they would find what is going on. Lord, we know you have put her in the hands of doctors that will care for her well because it is in your will. And it is through your power that those doctors have that skill and talent. Lord, we continue to pray for Cody and Kathy Bauer as they continue 
to go through. And Lord, we ask that the medicine changes that, that they've made to his medication are helpful and that, Lord, uh, continued progress will be made. We rejoice that he's feeling better after battling COVID and it is a joy to see them back in worship. But be with them and continue to, to care for them and watch over them. And Lord, we pray that the work of the doctors and that the medication that they have prescribed will be effective and helpful and that, Lord, it will be a long-term solution. We thank you for that. Lord, we continue to pray for Lee Talsma, and we hope and pray that they come to a decision regarding surgery that, that Lord, he can find full relief from his back pain. It is frustrating that when something comes and goes in that way where one day it's good, the next day it's bad, even from hour to hour, minute to minute, it changes. Lord, we can get frustrated. We can get just bogged down in the, in the disappointment of that. Lord, I ask that you be with Lee. Uh, keep his spirits high. And Lord, we ask that you be with the doctors, that they may see a way to give him full relief and full comfort from this back pain. Lord, we continue to pray for Lauren Van Otterloo as he continues with treatments. Lord, we're coming to the end of the treatment course. We thank you for the lessen the, the minimal side effects, but Lord, we know we can continue to pray that the chemotherapy is work, working and that the treatment is successful. And Lord, at the end of this cycle of treatment, we would be able to celebrate with them a clean bill of health, a return to normal. Lord, as they continue to look forward to that, give them comfort in knowing that you are in control of all things and that you, as the healer, can bring about that healing. We thank you for the doctors and the nurses who have cared for him. Lord, we thank you for his family that has supported him and, and loved him and cared for him. Be with, be with Lauren and Shelley and the kids as they continue to walk through this, as they come to the end of the treatment cycle, that, Lord, there is joy and there is rejoicing and praise for your faithfulness through this whole process. Lord, we pray for those who cannot worship with us. We pray for those who are at home or in nursing care or just can't make it today. They aren't feeling well. Lord, may they be blessed by our worship. And Lord, may you come close to them in your love and care. May they recognize your presence. May they feel you close to them. May they be comforted by your presence. Lord, we pray for our sister church. We pray for, for CRC. We pray for Pastor Lauren and all the prayer concerns there. Lord, we think of those who are recovering from surgery. We think of those who are battling cancer. Lord, we rejoice in good reports for Carver and Maddox Coima this week that their eyes are continuing to progress and that they're continuing to grow and that feeding is going well. We continue to pray for them that this would continue to be true. Lord, and we rejoice at the good news and we pray for continued growth and that someday soon, Lord, that they may come home and that that family may be together all the time and that they may get to grow in their house. Lord, we pray for all of those things. We place them at your feet. Again, Lord, we, we send you prayers of rejoicing. We send you prayers of concern. We send you prayers of, well, just joy. Lord, as we pray, we also pray that, Lord, you would forgive us of our sins. That you would forgive us of those ways and those times in which we failed knowing who you've called us to be, how you've called us to live, to live in truth and righteousness and holiness, and knowing that we failed, Lord. We ask your forgiveness. Lord, we ask 
that you come alongside us, be with us. And Lord, that we would be capable of fully repenting of those sins and turning away from them. And Lord, we rejoice in the truth of your forgiveness through your Son. And it is in his name and his shed blood alone that we pray. Amen. As we prepare to seek him in his word, let us sing together, Immortal, immortal Invisible, God Only Wise. Today we continue our series. Today we continue in our series, Simple and Specific. Now, I hope that you took me seriously last week when I said read through the book of Colossians. It's not a long read. Read through the book of Colossians every week as we go through that book together. Also, Advertisement for tonight, we will be discussing Christ, the name of Christ, and why that's important. And today we'll touch on that this morning, and we'll continue on that tonight. Again, the good Lord is faithful to do things broader and bigger than I can imagine, and he's done that. And we have that opportunity as we go through this book of Colossians, as we examine Paul very clearly declaring to the church in Colossa that there is one thing that's true. And you must remain in that truth. It is simple and it is specific. We are going to explore in the evening Jesus and how the creeds how the Apostles' Creed confesses him and the things that we should learn from that. So again, minor plug for tonight. Come on back. But together, let's look at establishing the primary point as Paul does that. Again, in Colossians, we're, beginning, we're in chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God, who, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross." Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. 
But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish, free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. These are the words of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we approach your throne now. Through your word, you have revealed yourself to us. Lord, as we consider your word, as we consider your revelation, Lord, open our hearts and open our minds that we may grow closer to you. And Lord, that you may create in us a new spirit. Create in us a spirit of willingness to serve, a willingness to share, a willingness to proclaim the truth that Jesus is Lord of all and that he is Savior. Lord, I ask that you come upon me, your servant, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be pleasing to you, and Lord, that they would find fertile soil in your people, that they would hear your words through me, and that they would grow closer to you. And Lord, that they would go from this place serving you, loving you, and sharing the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is in his name and his shed blood alone that we pray all of these things. Amen. When you think about magicians and pickpockets, do they sound like the same thing? Do they sound like similar things? Is that something you would equate as you look at activities. Now, I don't want to call a pickpocket a job. That's probably not what I want to call it. But when you think about a magician and a pickpocket, they both use the same tool. They both use the tool of distraction. When you, as a child or even as an adult, go to see a magician, what you'll find is that they're doing one thing over here while they're doing something either behind their back or over here in order to surprise you with what happened over here. That is their goal. Their goal is to distract you with what's going on over here. But the important thing, the thing that you're actually going to care about is happening on this side. Same thing happens with a pickpocket. In a big city, what will happen is someone hear Jesus speaking of, him, of himself, he says to the Pharisees, I am. Before Abraham, I am. That is a declaration of his divinity. And Paul is reckoning back to that and declaring Christ as divine. It's not something that Paul is making up. Christ spoke that truth there on earth and said, I am. And before Abraham, I am. Not I was, not I will be, I am. The verb am is a consistent present tense verb that says not only was he before, but he will be, he is, and he will be forever. That divinity, we have to settle that truth. We have to confess that truth. It is simple but it is specific that we declare that Christ is divine. We can't be distracted by all the other things that go along with how we see Christ. We cannot be distracted by he's our friend. That's true. We can't be distracted by, well, he's a good teacher. That's true. But divinity is a primary answer. We cannot be distracted by all those other things to take away his divinity, to take away from the divinity of Jesus Christ. We have to hold on to that. We cannot be distracted by all those other things. 
We hold on to those truths. Those are comforts for us, but we must stand in the truth that Christ is divine. He was there at creation. He has been there. He was there before creation. He is eternal. He is holy. He is almighty. Paul needs the Colossian church and calls on us today to be reminded of the supremacy of Jesus Christ as divine, as holy God, not separated from the Father, but one with him, the image of God here. The voice that's called, the voice that called out in the desert declared that truth, and Paul again declares that truth for us here. But not only is he divine, we need to be reminded that he's the head of the church. We need to be reminded that he is our head. He is who we look to. He is our salvation. He is our only salvation as the head of the church. When you talk about how God described what Christ was going to do. One of the things that is interesting to me, he says, he will strike his heel and he will crush his head in Genesis 3.15. Crush his head. He will crush the head of the serpent. Why do you crush the head of a serpent? Why do you destroy that? If you crush it, if you crush the head of a serpent, it can no longer do anything. It is useless. It is dead. It is done. When you disconnect something from its head, there's nothing left for it to do. So why does Paul say, oh, by the way, Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of who you are as a community. Christ is the head of all of the church, the universal church. Why does Paul say that? Not only to Col the Colossian church, but to us. Why does he say that here? So often we have the ability to be distracted by things that seem like, well, that's good. That, that, that could be a salvation thing. The world will try to pull us away. Satan Satan will try to disconnect us from the head, Jesus Christ, by distracting us with other things. He will distract us with good things and bad things. He will disconnect us from Christ through things that we should be doing and things that we shouldn't be doing. But those distractions, when they disconnect us from Christ, are lethal. God calls us to a calling. He gives us a talent and he says, go and work at that talent. Go into that calling. Do that. Be successful in what I've given you to do. Dedicate yourself to that work, but do it through me. If you disconnect Christ for the work that you're doing at work, you've disconnected. If you disconnect Christ for the things you have at home, for your children, for your chores. If you disconnect Christ from your work at school, kids. When those become more important, when those become higher priority than Jesus Christ, you have disconnected yourself from him. That distraction becomes more important than your connection to Jesus Christ. Paul is looking at the Colossian church and they're saying, well, we gotta do this and we gotta do this and we gotta do this. But what they're not saying is we need to worship Jesus Christ. We need to understand that Jesus Christ is the sacrifice, the only sacrifice that brings us to right relationship with God. When we start putting other things, we hold on to those distractions. That important thing gets behind us more and more. More and more. It keeps drifting further and further behind us. One time it's here. It's in our peripheral vision. 
It starts here. It starts moving. And it gets to here and kind of switching back and forth. Then it's here and you see it in the corner of your eye. And then it's here. And then it's here. And in order to see it again, you have to turn around. You have to hold on to the truth that Christ is the head of the church. That's our responsibility. That is how we look at things. As the church, we must hold Christ as the single source of salvation. We, he is the single source of salvation. We don't declare any other gospel. We don't declare any other way of salvation. It is not through works. It is not through worship of angels. It is not through prayers to saints. It is through Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church. We must hold to that. And that is what Paul is declaring to the Colossian church here. He wants us to hear that as we look at verses 18 and following. Read carefully. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn among the dead, so that everything he might have, in everything he might have supremacy. He is the firstborn of the dead. This kind of was, as I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, no, actually there were three others that were raised from the dead before Christ rose from the dead. If you look in Scripture, there are three other individuals, Elijah and the Shunammite woman's daughter or son. Um, the, he raised Lazarus, and he raised the son of the military official. Okay, So there are three. But why is Christ the firstborn? He is the primary born. It's interesting that when Joseph's sons came out of Egypt and they were granted, uh, and Joseph was uh, talking to his sons, he gave his secondborn the right of the firstborn. So the firstborn is an important word here because he is the primary one. It is him, it is in him, in his resurrection, his defeat of death, that we have resurrection. Why is he the head of the church? Because he is the firstborn of the dead, and we need to stay focused on that. We cannot be distracted from that truth. We have to declare that often. Make sure that we're sharing the truth of the gospel. We must hold on to the truth that Christ is, is the head of the church. Christ is our reconciliation. Christ is our returning to God. Our Christ is our returning to right relationship. Christ is the way in which we are reunited. Christ is the way that we have hope in eternity. In Christ is our salvation. That reconciliation only comes through him. Once you were alienated for, from God and were em, enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish, free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, if you continue in your faith, that reconciliation is about faith. It's not about the things that you do. It's not about the works that you've done. It's not about how you measure up. If we get distracted with how we measure up, we make our salvation about us. We make our reconciliation about what we do, who we know, where we go, how we talk, the way we walk, what we look like, who our parents were, who our grandparents were. Paul is making a definitive statement that it is in faith in Jesus Christ 
that we are reconciled to God. We have to, we must, must hold on to that. We cannot get distracted by what's going on over here. All the things that the world says, well, that's how you get, that's how you get to heaven. That's how you're saved. We have to hold on to the truth that is over here, that Christ is our reconciliation. Christ is our God. Christ is the head of the church, and Christ is our reconciliation. We must hold on to that truth. There is nothing else. No other thing can make us right with God except faith in Jesus Christ. That is what Paul is declaring. He declares it throughout this book, but it's very evident right here. He is going to continue to pound on this nail until he drives it home. My wife will tell you I'm not a good carpenter. I need to hit nails way more than most people. I kind of feel like that's where Paul's at right now. I'm going to keep hitting this. I'm not sure this wood is really thick. This wood is really dense. You aren't getting it. I'm going to drive this nail all the way home. And that's what he does throughout this book. He is going to drive home. Repeatedly striking the truth that Christ is God. Christ is the head of the church. And Christ is our salvation. We cannot be distracted by all those things that say, you know what, if you do this, you'll get that. If you read this, if you study this, if you say this, if you do this, no, Christ is our salvation. Christ is our only salvation. We have to hold on to the truth that he is God. He is the head of us as the church and he is our only reconciliation to God. That is what we're leaving with today. We leave with today, we cannot be distracted by all of the other things that happen in this world. All the other things that people say are good and right. Our salvation can come from this or that. Those distractions are dangerous. Now I'm reminded, I, I'm, I'm a history guy. I'm reminded of the preparation for D-Day. I'm reminded how the allied armies, in order to get Hitler looking one way, they created blow-up tanks and mannequins and created an army that was reported to say, well, they're going to come over here. They're going to invade over here. And as they prepared for D-Day, they were invading in a completely other place. They were headed to Normandy. But in order to distract, they set up something that looked very real, very very much like this is where they're coming from. It was convincing. When they invaded at Normandy, they were successful. But when I look at it from the German side, that distraction caused defeat. When they looked over here, they lost the vision of the priority. That distraction caused defeat. We cannot be distracted from this truth. We cannot let the things of this world, the ideas of the enlightened, distract us from the truth that Jesus Christ is our only hope. He is our Savior. He is our reconciliation. 
hold on to that truth. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And Jesus Christ is our reconciliation to God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before your throne, Lord, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to be our reconciliation, to be our salvation, to stand in our stead, to be sacrificed on our behalf. Lord, may we not get distracted by those things that can so easily take us away from you, can so easily move us in such a way that we don't focus on you. Lord, let us be faithful in keeping focus on you. And Lord, may we be servants that declare the truth of your coming, declare the truth of the gospel and share it so that the world may know. Lord, as we prepare to give back our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings, we're thankful, Lord, that we can give to the general fund and to the Hope Education Fund. We thank you, Lord, for the work of this church, and we thank you, Lord, for the work of the Christian schools that we support and we share and we share ministry with. Lord, may our gifts and our tithes be a blessing to them, and Lord, may it grow your kingdom that they may, that the world may know that you, Christ, you are the Christ, you are God, you are the head of this church, and you are are our reconciliation. We pray all of these things in your Son's name and his shed blood alone. Amen.
in response, let us stand to sing together the first place. A couple quick reminders. Please come back this evening. We will be kind of flowing along in the same area, but please return. Also, a thank you um, for those of you that have updated and uploaded pictures and updated your information on the Bridge app. Um, it is helpful. Um, if you haven't yet and would like help, stop and talk to me or uh, any, any one of the elders or uh, if you have a picture, you can drop it in the secretary's box. But again, it, it's just very, it's a very helpful tool for us to remain and stay connected and be able to connect with one another in times of prayer and need. And as we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and grant you his peace. And may he turn his face towards you. We pray these things in his name. Amen. Amen.